How y'all doing? Arthur Scott. Mm. I'm gonna be going through the Sumerian tablets. Only certain parts because I'm trying to show something about the patriarch, the the kingship, the rulership, or however you, however they want to play the lineage. And long story short, the Jesus story is in there. All the fallen angel stories are in there. I talk about it here and there. Let me see if I can dig it out in a simpler fashion than watching all of them. So I'm gonna turn my volume down and y'all can have it. Synopsis of the Fourth Tablet The Nibiruans hail even the small gold delivery. Tests of gold's use as an atmospheric shield succeed. Additional heroes and new equipment are sent to Earth. Gold extraction from the water continues to disappoint. Ea discovers gold sources that need deep mining in the Abzu. Enlil, then Anu, come to Earth for crucial decisions. As the half-brothers quarrel, lots decide the task. Ea, renamed Inki, Earth's master goes to the Abzu. Enlil stays to develop permanent facilities in the Eden. As Anu prepares to leave, he is attacked by Elelu. The seven who judge sentence Elelu to exile on Lemu. Anu's daughter Ninma, a medical officer, is sent to Earth. Stopping off at Lemu, Mars, she finds Elelu dead. A rock carved to resemble Elelu's face serves as his tomb. Anzu is given command of a way station on Lemu. To Nibiru, words of the ascent were beamed. On Nibiru, there was much expecting. With confidence was Abgal the chariot guiding. Around Kinyu, the moon, he made a circuit. By its net powers, speed to gain. A thousand leagues, ten thousand leagues toward Lamu, he journeyed. By its net power, a direction toward Nibiru to obtain. Beyond Lemu, the hammer bracelet was a whirling. Deftly did Abgal Ia's crystals make a glow, the open paths to locate. The eve of fate upon him with favor looked. Beyond the bracelet, the chariot beam signals from Nibiru was receiving. Homeward, homeward was the direction. Ahead, in the darkness, in reddish hue glowed Nibiru. A sight to behold it was. By the beam signals, the chariot was now directed. Trice around Nibiru it made circuits, by its net force to be slowed. Nearing the planet, the breach in its atmosphere Abgal could see. A squeezing in his heart he felt, of the gold he was bringing was he thinking. Passing through the atmosphere's thickness, a glow was the chariot, its heat overbearing. Deftly did Abgal spread the chariot's wings, its descent thereby resting. Beyond lay the place of the chariots, a sight most inviting. Gently did Abgal the chariot bring down to a place by the beams selected. He opened the hatch. A multitude of populace was there assembled. Anu toward him stepped forward, locked arms, warm greetings uttered. Heroes into the chariot rushed, the gold-bearing baskets they brought out. High above their heads they the baskets held. To the assembled words of victory Anu shouted, Salvation is here, to them he was saying. To the palace was Abgal accompanied, to rest and tell all he was escorted. The gold, a sight most dazzling, by the savants was quickly taken. To make of it the finest dust, to skyward launch it was hauled away. A shard did the fashioning last, a shard did the testing continue. With rockets was the dust heavenward carried, by crystals beams was it dispersed. Where there was a breach, now there was a healing. Joy the palace filled, abundance in the land was expected. To earth, Anu, good words, was beaming. Gold gives salvation, the obtaining of gold do continue. When Nibiru near the sun came, the golden dust was by its rays disturbed. The healing in the atmosphere was dwindled. The breach to bigness returned. Anu, the return of Abgal to earth, then commanded. In the chariot more heroes traveled. In its bowels more, that which the water sucks in and thrust out, were provided. With them, Nungal, to travel, was commanded, a pilot helper to Abgal to become. Great joy there was when Abgal to Iridu returned. Many greetings and the locking of arms there was. The new water... Just locking down these names 
of all the different so-called gods or fallen angels. All the same exact story. Between the 15th and 19th centuries, a vast slave trade was established between Europe, Africa, and America. Approximately 12 million men, women, and children were sold as slaves on the coast of Africa, torn from their homeland. And Why would that commercial be on my channel? If any of you have seen it, let me know. But if any of you have seen it, I can imagine they're targeting us for that information. Somebody's going to take the bait. Listening of gold ores at Bad Tibera, he observed. In the abs. Synopsis of the fifth tablet. Ninma arrives on Earth with a group of female nurses. She delivers seeds to grow elixir providing plants. She brings in Lil news of their out of wedlock son Ninurta. In the Abzu, Inki establishes an abode and mining sites. In the Eden, Enlil builds space and other facilities. Nibiruans on Earth, number 600. 300 Agigi operate the facilities on Lamu. Exile Yeah, all right, that's the right one. If I'm not mistaken, the Agigi are the watchers, the ones who take the daughters of man by force. Child for date raping Sud, Enlil learns of the hidden weapons. Sud becomes Enlil's spouse, Ninlil, bears a son, Nanar. Sud becomes Enlil's spouse, Ninlil, bears a son, Nanar. Ninma joins Inki in the Abzu, bears him daughters. Ninki, Inki's spouse, arrives with their son, Marduk. Clan Marduk is a big player in the game. I'd even say the role of Satan in a sense but you'd have to wait to the end of the story to find out in a sense why but marduk has a few lines just like jesus and just as you see here inky's wife arrives with their son marduk arrives to the abzu which is earth arrives there with their son marduk which means at the beginning he already was and he uses that line in here to say before all this earth junk started I was already in the game and he's gonna use those lines Lands form on earth as Inky and Enlil beget more sons beset by hardships the Agigi launch a coup against Enlil Ninurta defeats their leader Anzu in aerial battles the Anunnaki driven to produce gold faster, mutiny. Enlil and Ninurta denounce the mutineers. Inki suggests to artificially fashion primitive workers. From the planet Lamu, the chariot departed. Toward Earth, the journey it continued. Around the moon, they made circuits, a way station thereon to explore. Around the Earth, they made circuits toward a splashdown slowing. In the waters beside Iridu did Nangal the chariot bring down. To a quay by Enlil constructed, they stepped off. Boats were no longer needed. Enlil and Inki, their sister, with embraces greeted. With Nangal, the pilot, they locked arms. The heroes, male and female, by the present heroes, were with shouts greeted. 
All that the chariot had brought was quickly unloaded. Rocket ships and sky ships and the tools by Inky designed and provisions of all kinds. Of all that on Nibiru transpired of the death and burying of Alelu, Nin On earth it was summer. To his abode in the cedar forest Enlil retreated. In the cedar forest was Enlil walking in the cool of the day. In a cool mountain stream, some of Nimma's young ones to the landing places landing place commanded also stood. In the Abzu were the heroes assembled under the gaze of Inki they stood. With Inki was his vizier Izumud, Nungal the pilot was there too. On the Mu the heroes were assembled with their proud commander Anzu they stood. Six hundred were on earth, three hundred on the Mu were gathered. In all there were nine hundred, the words of Anu the king they all heard. Heroes of Nibiru, you are the saviors. The fate of all is in your hands. Your success shall for eternity be recorded. By glorious names you shall be called. Those who on earth are shall as Anunnaki be known, those who from heaven to earth came. Those who on Lamu are, Egigi shall be named, those who observe and see they shall be. All that is required is ready. Let the gold start coming. Let Nibiru be saved. Now this is the account of Inki and Enlil and Ninma, their loves and espousals, and by their sons the rivalries. Offspring of Anu the three leaders were. By different mothers were they born. Inki was the firstborn son. A concubine of Anu was his mother. Enlil by Antu the spouse of Anu was born. The legal heir he thus became. Nimma by another concubine was mother. Now, if yeah. Now, if you notice, I was about to wrap the whole thing I was gonna say, <laughs> but I'm not even gonna mess with y'all. We're learning. I was gonna wrap the whole thing though. <laughs> um, but if you notice, the focus of kingship or descendancy of the heir to the throne, in a sense, is already in question, kind of like the Cain and Abel, um, Isaac and Jacob, I'm sorry, Isaac and Ishmael, Jacob and Esau. And since one is by a servant woman, he's cast to the side, and that's Inky. One born of the, in a sense, pure seed, or two portions of the father's bloodline is which I'm finding out what that whole thing is. But they already got that going in their dynasties. And just to explain what I meant by two portions of the father's seed is you notice in the Bible, Abraham in a sense was married to his half sister. Therefore making their seed purer than anything that Hagar could have dropped. Not because of technically the woman's seed, but in the sense the X chromosome, or one of the X chromosomes that the woman carries is from the same place that the father got his Y chromosome, therefore completing the cycle of kinship or uh, lineage, or you get what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's right, cause you know, I ain't looking at my sister, that's just nasty. But freaking, I get it. There's two portions of the same dynasty. So I'm going to say some jacked up shit right now. But if I had a son and then I had a daughter and my son had a son with a random woman of a different lineage, but then had a son afterward with his sister of the same lineage. Therefore, not only the X chrom chromosome, but the Y chromosome are both from the same source. In a sense, I guess you can say stamping the lineage into a more concrete fashion. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, cool, because ain't nobody trying to do that today. <laughs> Y'all enjoy. Mothered a half-sister of the two half-brothers she was. The firstborn daughter of Anu she was, by her name title, Nimba, this was indicated. Greatly beautiful she was, full of wisdom, one quick to learn. Ea, as Inki, then was named. By Anu to espouse, Nimma was chosen. Thereby their offspring's son, the legal successor thereafter to become. Nimma of Enlil, a dashing commander, was enamored. 
By him she was seduced. Into her womb his seed he poured. A son from Enlil's seed she bore. Ninurta, the two have named him. By the deed was Anu angered. A punishment he Nimma ever to be a spouse forbade. Ea, his bride-to-be, by Anu's decree abandoned. A princess named Damkina he instead espoused. A son, an heir to them was born. Marduk they named him. One in a pure place born it meant. As for Enlil, a son not by espousal he had, a spouse by his side to be he did not have. It was on earth, not on the Biru. So if you get... Yo, 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 yo. So if you get the politics, in a sense, before they came to Earth, Enlil's, I mean, Inky's born first. Angel. So I always look at it as Michael and Gabriel. Enlil and Inky. I always look at it as Michael and Gabriel. But Inky was born first. But he was born to a side piece. I guess that's the best way to say it. Enlil was born second. But he was born, in a sense, pure of both lineages. Enlil date rapes somebody and gives birth to, in a sense, a bastard seed. Inky marries the person he's supposed to marry and has birth to Marduk, pure seed. So, in a sense, the first is last and the last is now first. But, you know, there's further complications in who gets what throne? The throne of Earth. <laughs> that Enlil became his spouse. The account of that is one of rape and exile and love that brought forgiveness, and of more sons that were only half brothers. On Earth it was summer. To his abode in the cedar forest, Enlil retreated. In the cedar forest was Enlil walking in the cool of the day. In a cool mountain stream, some of Nimma's young ones, to the landing place assigned, were bathing. By the beauty and grace of one, Sud was her name, Enlil was enchanted. To his cedar wood abode, Enlil her invited. Come, partake with me in the elixir of Nibiru's fruit that grew here, so to her he said. Sud into Enlil's abode entered, the elixir in a cup to her Enlil presented. Sud drank, Enlil drank too, to her Enlil of intercourse was speaking. Unwilling was the lass. My vagina is too little. It knows not com compulation to Enlil, she was saying. To her, Enlil of kissing was speaking. Unwilling was the lass. My lips are too small. They know not kissing to Enlil, she was saying. Enlil laughed and embraced her. He laughed and he kissed her. His semen into her womb he poured. To Ninma, Sud's commander, the immortal deed was reported. Enlil, immoral one, for your deed judgment you shall face, so did Nimma to Enlil in anger say. In the presence of fifty Anunnaki, seven who judge were assembled. Seven who judge on Enlil a punishment decreed. Let Enlil from all cities be banished to a land of no return, let him exiled be. In a sky chamber they made Enlil leave the landing place. Abgal was its pilot. To a land of no return, Enlil was taken, never to return. In the sky chamber, the two of them journeyed to another land was their direction. There, amidst forbidding mountains, at a place of desolation, Abgal, the sky chamber, landed. This, your place of exile, shall be, Abgal to Enlil was saying. Not perchance have I it chosen, to Enlil he was saying, a secret of Inky in it is hidden. In the nearby cave, Inky, seven weapons of terror, has hidden. From Alelu's celestial chariot, Enlil, as your spouse, they ask her. Words of consent she uttered. The words by Abgal to Enlil in his exile were conveyed. To espouse Sud, Enlil from his exile was returned. By that did Inky and Nimma to him a pardon give. Enlil's official spouse, Sud, was declared. On her, the name title Ninlil, Lady of the Command, was bestowed. Thereafter, to Ninlil and Enlil, a son was born. Nanar, the Bright One, Ninlil him named. He was the first of the Anunnaki on Earth to be conceived. One of Nibiru's royal seed on an alien planet to be born. It was after that that Enki to Ninma was speaking. Come be with me in the Abzu. 
In the midst of the Abzu, in a place of pure waters, an abode have I established. With a bright metal, silver is its name, it is embellished. With a deep blue stone, lapis lazuli, it is adorned. Come, Nimma, be with me, your adoration of Enlil abandoned. To the Abzu, to the abode of Inki, Nimma then journeyed. Inki there to her words of loving spoke. Of how for each other intended sweet words to her, he whispered. You are still my beloved, to her he said, caressing. He embraced her, he kissed her. She caused his phallus to water. Inki, his semen, into the womb of Nimma poured. Give me a son, give me a son, he cried out. She took the semen into her womb, the semen of Inki her impregnated. One day of Nibiru was a month of earth for her. Two days, three days, four days of Nibiru like months of earth they were. Five and six and seven and eight days of months were completed. The ninth count of motherhood was completed. Nimma was in travail. To a child she gave birth. The newborn was a female. On the banks of the river in the Abzu, a daughter to Inki and Nimma was born. Inki, by a daughter, was disappointed. Kiss the young one to him, Nimma said. Kiss the young one, Inki, to his vizier, Izamud said. A son I desired. A son by my half-sister I must have. Again he kissed Nimma, by her loins he grabbed her, his semen into her womb he poured. Again she was with child, again a daughter to Inki she bore. A son, a son by you I must have, Inki to her cried out, Nimma he kissed again. Thereupon Nimma against Inki a cursing tittered. Whatever food he ate was poison in his innards. His jaw hurt, his tooth hurt, his ribs were hurting. Izumud, the Anunnaki, summoned to Nimma for relief, they were pleading. To distance himself from Nimma's vulva, Inki, by raised arm, swore. One by one, she his ailments removed. From her curse, Inki was freed. To the Eden, Nimma returned, never to be espoused. Anu's command was fulfilled. To earth, Inki, his spouse, Damkina, with their son, Marduk, summoned. Ninki, Lady of Earth, the title she was granted. By her, and by her concubines, Inki five more sons had. These were their names, Nergal and Gibble, Ninagal and Ningesita, and Demuzi, the youngest. To Earth, Enlil and Nimma, their son Ninurna, summoned. By his spouse, Ninlil, did Enlil one more son have. To Nanar, a full brother, Ishkur, was his name. Three sons in all did Enlil have, none by concubines were they born. Two clans were the Damkina, with their son Marduk summoned. Ninki, Lady of Earth. Alright, hi everybody. Conclusion to what? Lonnie, I thought faithful or true son. Here you have D U M U Z I, right? In a D, right? Now let's go back to that. What does it say, right? Where, what the fuck? Where's that shit as, right? Oh, Delani. I thought that. Uh, Dumu, Dumu, Z. Same kind. Pratyondu Yuddha Gamula, Swartha. Lady of Earth, the title she was granted by her.
E U N. and by her concubines, Inky five more sons had. These were their names, Nergal and Gibel, Ninagal and Ningesita, and Demuzi, the youngest. To earth, Enlil and Nimma, their son Ninurna, summoned. By his spouse, Ninlil, did Enlil one more son have. To Nanar, a full brother, Ishkur, was his name. Three sons in all did Enlil have, none by concubines were they born. Two clans were thus on earth established, their rivalries to wars did lead. Now this is the account of Yeah. 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 Check it. Okay. There seems to be two sides good and evil, but these ain't people, they're Anunnaki. I know their relationship is shocking, but I'm just playing I ain't gonna do that to y'all, but I could. Know that I could. <laughs> If you're gonna use it, use it right. Them lyrics, I mean. But you see, there's two sides, right? All fallen angels. You would even put Gabriel on the list of fallen angels. You know what I'm saying? If he touched ground to earth, then he came down. Not necessarily against the creator, but at the same time came down. Not saying that they keep mentioning their father, Anu. That is not the creator. Later on, they will mention that there is a creator of all and they listen to it or he. The power. You get what I'm saying? So, good and evil, but it, you get it. You get it. I'm out. And I could have did it. <laughs> of the mutiny of the Agigi, and how Anzu to death was put for stealing the tablets of destinies punished. From the Abzu, gold from Earth's veins to the landing place was carried. Thence, Igigi in rocket ships to the way station on Lemu transported. Twelve emblems was the family of the sun marked. On Mies were the secret formulas of sun and moon, Nibiru and earth, and eight celestial gods recorded. With Anu did Enlil and Inki words exchange, the king they consulted. Let the leader come to earth. With Anzu have discussions, so did Anu to them say. Anzu to earth from the heavens descended, the words of complaints to Enlil and Inki he delivered. Let Anzu of the workings gain understanding, Inki to Enlil was saying. I will the Abzu to him show, you the bond heaven and earth to him reveal. To the words of Inki Enlil consented. Inki to Anzu the Abzu did show, the toil in the minds to him he presented. Enlil Anzu to Nib Nibruki invited. To the Just to catch you up on the drama so I don't have to listen to the whole thing. The Anunnaki in Zachariah Sitchin's version, which you see the book right there. They say the Anunnaki came here for gold for their own personal purpose. In another version, you can say, I don't know exactly where it's from. They say that that's all a lie, kind of Masonic in a sense. And the truth is the angels or Anunnaki, fallen gods, were in the positions of creating the earth and taking you know jobs in the ordinances and some of them didn't want to do that task if the earth was not created for them so that's when the rebellion happened so in this version they're going to blame the rebellion on the fact that the angels fallen gods whatever you want to call it got tired of digging gold and this that and the other and in the process of dealing gold and whatever when you read the long version they're like, um, oh, they're creating mountains, they're creating rivers and everything in between while they're digging for gold. They're creating the earth. They're making it in here that they got tired of digging gold and they need a slave to do it. So, I get why they would make the two different versions or why this guy would make the other version because this version takes the, important man, the importance of man out of the equation until very late in the game to the point it's almost unnoticeable unless you're listening for it so I'm now gonna skip some <laughs>
and try to get to the creation of man because that's the solution to this problem. Right now, one side is like, we ain't digging no more. We ain't getting no more gold. Screw that. Rebellion. And Inky and Enlil are like, what can we do? Inky's like, I can make man. And Lil's like, uh, I guess. <laughs> Lamu Marduk was sent, the spirits of the Gagigi, to raise, to their well-being, pay attention. On earth, changes were by Enlil and Inky discussed to avoid unrest on earth they were considering. The stays on earth are too prolonged, to each other they were saying. Ninma for counsel they asked, by her changing visage they were alarmed. Gold to Nibiru must more quickly flow, salvation must be faster provided they all agreed was consulted and his approval gave. In the Eden was the metal city planned. On that location in Lil did insist. With materials from Nibiru was it constructed. With tools from Nibiru was it equipped. Three shars, the Constructor and Abgal and Nungal among them were. The newcomers who them replaced were younger and eager. To the cycles of earth and Lemu and the other rigors they were not how maladies by earth cycles and atmosphere were caused he wished to uncover. In the Abzu, by the gushing they held him as they went to the doorway of Enlil's dwelling, they made their way. It was night, half Synopsis of the Sixth Tablet To the incredulous leadership, Inky reveals a secret. In the Abzu, there roams a wild being akin to the Anunnaki. By augmenting its life essence with that of the Anunnaki, it can be upgraded to be an intelligent, primitive worker. Creation belongs to the father of all beginning, Enlil shouted. We will give our image only to an existing being, Nimma argued. Badly needing gold to survive, the leaders vote yes. Inki, Ninma, and Ningizita, Inki's son, begin experiments. After many failures, the perfect model, Adamu, is attained. Ninma shouts triumphantly, My hands have made it. She is renamed. Ah, they say after many failures, those many failures were allowed to continue existing. Now they say that those failures can't mate with each other. Some of them couldn't see, some of them, you know, there was different versions. Some of them half man, half something else. You get what I'm talking about. Um, they're saying some versions couldn't mate within themselves, man and woman. So they just leave that at that. But it makes me wonder that when they perfected it, could those versions come back and mate with the perfected man? or woman and create an abomination within this creation. I don't know. And they don't answer it either. So that's just a nugget to chew on. 
Ninti, Lady of Life, for her achievement. Ninki, Inki's spouse, helps fashion Tiamat, a female earthling. The earthlings, being hybrids, mate but do not procreate. Ningisida adds two essence branches to their life tree. Discovering the unapproved ongoings, Enlil expels the earthlings. To create a primitive worker by the mark of our essence to fashion him, so was Inki to the leaders, saying, The being that we need, it already exists. Thus did Inki to them a secret of the Abzu reveal. With astonishment did the other leaders Inki's words hear. By the words they were fascinated. Creatures in the Abzu there are, Inki was saying, that walk erect on two legs. Their forelegs they use as arms, with hands they are provided. Among the animals of the steppe they live, they know not dressing in garments. They eat plants with their mouths. They drink water from lake and ditch. Shaggy with hair is their whole body. Their head hair is like a lion's. With gazelles they jostle. With teeming creatures in the waters they delight. The leaders of Inky's words with amazement listened. No creature like that has ever in the Eden been seen, Enlil disbelieving said. Eons ago on Nibiru, our predecessors like that might have been, Nimma was saying. It is a being, not a creature. Nimma was saying, to behold, it must be a thrill. To the house of life, Inky led them. In strong cages there were some of the beings. At the sight of Inky and the others, they jumped up. With fist on the cage bar, it is entwined. With their, with our life essence, shall be combined. Our mark upon them shall be. A primitive worker shall be created. Our commands will he understand. Our tools he will handle. The toil in the excavations he shall perform. Brother responded, Not slaves, but helpers in my plan. The being already exists, Nimma was saying. Nimma was the one to respond. My brother, Nimma to Enlil was saying, with wisdom and understanding has the father of all beginning us endowed. To what purpose have we been so perfected, else of it utmost us to make? With wisdom and understanding has the creator of all, our life essence filled to whatever using of it we are capable, it is not that for which we have been destined, so create to be planning? That, my kinfolk, is the question. The essence is transmitted. The two entwined strands separate and combine an offspring to fashion. Let a male Anunnaki, a two-legged female, impregnate. Let a combination offspring be born, thus did Nima say. That we have tried, with failures it resulted, to her, Inky responded. There was no conceiving, there was no birth. Now this is the account of how the primitive worker was created. How Inky and Nima, with Ningazita assisting, the being fashioned. Another way the admixture of essences to attain must be tried, Nimma was saying. How the two strands of essences to combine another way must be found. That which from the earth is in the portion must not be harmed. To receive our essence in graduations it must be shaped. From the me formulas of Nibiru's essence only bit by bit could be attempted. In a crystal vessel, Nimma an admixture was preparing, the oval of a female two-legged she gently placed, with me on a knocky seed containing, she the oval impregnated. That oval back into the womb of the two-legged female she inserted. This time there was conceiving, a birth was indeed forthcoming. The allotted time for birth giving the leaders awaited. With anxious hearts they results were seeking. The allotted time arrived. There was no birth giving. In desperation, Nimma, a cutting maid, that which was conceived with tongs, she drew out. A living being it was. With glee, Inky shouted. We attained, Ningazita, with joy cried out. In her hands, Nimma, the newborn, held. With joy, she was not filled. Shaggy with hair all over was the newborn. His foreparts, like of the earth creatures, were. His hind parts, to those of the Anunnaki, more akin they were. They let the two-legged female, the newborn nurse, with her milk him to suckle. Fast was the newborn growing, what on Nibiru a day was, a month in the Abzu was. Taller the earth child grew, in the image of the Anunnaki he was not. His hands for tools were not suited, his speech only grunting sounds was. We must try once more, Nimba was saying, the admixture needs adjusting. Let me, the me's assay, with this or that me make the endeavor. With Inky and Ningazita assisting, they repeated the procedures. The essences in the Mies Nima carefully considered. 
One bit she took from one, one bit she took out from another. Then, in the Yo, it's getting late. <laughs> if you want to, you can feel free to listen through all of it. I kind of know what I'm looking for, so I'm going to jump through a bit faster than it would to be listening through all of it. But <clears throat> we shall continue. They have yet to perfect the creation of man. But all I've shown you thus far is Demuzi or Tammuz. And he hasn't even had a role in the story yet. He's just mentioned upon his birth. Ra's going to come into play. Osiris, Ishtar, Marduk. You get it. The gang's all there. <laughs> I'm going to talk to y'all later.